Welcome back to Unapologetically Woman. We're celebrating phenomenal women all across Kentucky who make no apologies for their perspectives or the impacts that they're making in the community. Today, we're celebrating Ebony Hutchinson. Ebony is the principal of the Promise Academy at William Wells Brown Elementary. She's a wife and the mom of Braylon and Brianna. Unapologetically woman, Ebony Hutchinson, that's you. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks I'm so me. excited to be able to celebrate you today. Thank you. We want to learn all about you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're the principal at William Wells Brown Elementary. Yes, ma'am. How did, where's your story start? So I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, went to Kentucky State University for undergrad, um, graduated at University of Kentucky um, for grad school, started teaching in Shelby County. So I've taught first, second, um, third and fourth grades, was there teaching, um, left the classroom after about seven or eight years in the classroom, was a district math coach, then was an instructional coach for a few years. I worked at Mill Creek Elementary as their assistant principal for about six years, and then this is my second year at the Promise Academy at William Wells Brown as their principal. And so you made all of that sound so easy. And I know that, and I know <laughs> I that, wish. It, no, I know that it doesn't happen yeah. that way. So you grew up in Ohio with mm -hmm. your parents. I How did. did your parents influence you to become who you are today. Absolutely. So both of my parents, you know, instilled in myself and my two siblings, I have a brother and a sister. I'm a middle child. And oh, no. so I know that's a good thing, <laughs> though. But education was always number one, always. So school was always important. You know, we grew up where it was like, you want to go out on the weekend, don't get sick like on a Thursday or Friday from school because you won't <laughs> be going anywhere. You'll be at home. <laughs> so education was always important, always number one. And so what they did was they tried to provide for the three of us um, children just the best that they could with the best that they could um, and so that is really what I try to do for all of my students so even as a teacher as an administrator as a coach I treated my kids just as my parents did for me and then also as I do my own personal children now are you a first gen no. No, okay. Yeah, my dad um, graduated. He actually worked in social work for 40 years before retiring. Mm -hmm. And so how did that affect you? He is all about service, um, community service. And so that is really where my heart is in serving, um, servant leadership. And so mm -hmm. he was a big... Um, uh, influence on who I am and what I do and how I do what I do. And so a lot of you, you're talking about service. Mm -hmm. um, you are dedicated to service because you're also a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Absolutely. That is built on service mm -hmm. to others. Absolutely. How does all of that fit in? So service is a part of who you are. It's, it's not something extra. It's just who you are as a person. It's who I am. And so serving, whether it's in my community, whether it's through my job, um, everything is is coming from the heart. It's who I am as a person. You can't, for me, you can't separate those two. It's a package deal. Right, it's a package deal. You either deal. have it or you don't have Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So you've done a lot of work, mm -hmm. but the title that I think that's going to be beholden to you is the title of mom. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your children. Brianna is 16. She is a sophomore at Frederick Douglass High School, and Braylon is 10. He is a fourth grader at Mill Creek Elementary. They are about as opposite as opposites can get. Mm -hmm. um, I use them a lot with my teachers and staff, and I talk to them about how parenting for me with the two of them is very different. Just as, you know, you work with the kids in the school, the expectations are the same, but the way I get them there is going to look different. You know, Braylon is all boy. Um, has a heart of gold, uh, but he is definitely all boy. Mm -hmm. Brianna, I mean, she's sweet. She's a girl. She's a 16 year old girl. Yes. <laughs> You're a mom. You've got girls. Mm -hmm. You know what that, that entails. Um, but she started school, I think, at a very different level than what, you know, Braylon did. She started school reading chapter books. Um, and Braylon, not so much. So I remember telling teachers who had Braylon that I remembered seeing the effects of a good teacher through him because she, he came through school needing that great teacher who could mm -hmm. help him get to where he needed to be. And being that great teacher is so important. Mm -hmm. And so you're a teacher um, for your kids as well. I see you at basketball games mm -hmm. watching your daughter cheer. Mm -hmm. Um, that makes for a long day. 
It does. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. and so how do you manage all of these things? And this is one of the things that men don't never, they never get asked this question, uh -huh. but how do you manage all of these things? Because a mom, a wife, you mm -hmm. know, you've got to ke keep Carl on his toes, <laughs> you know. Yeah. How do you manage all of those things? It is definitely a work in progress. Um, I don't think anybody has it down perfectly. If they do, give me their number and their name <laughs> and I'm going to call them up. <laughs> Um, spending time with, you know, girlfriends, that has been so important to me. Making sure to spend time, you know, and focus on yourself as well because you can't get lost in all of the titles that you have and forget who you are as a person. Um, so I have some amazing support system sisters who hold, we hold each other accountable. We have made time, you know, we have an event this evening we're going to just for dinner because we need to catch up. So we realize mm -hmm. if we don't schedule it, it's not going to happen. So scheduling time for myself making sure that I can take care of me first, which is hard. So I've had to set some boundaries, like Do I turn off. Do you feel guilty? Sometimes, mm -hmm. <laughs> I try not to. Um, sometimes I do, but I realize that if I am not, you know, who I need to be, and if I don't feel okay, then I can't be who I need to be for my kids, for my family, for my work, um, for my sorority, I can't be who I need to be. So it's just taking that time out for myself, making sure that I'm, um, you know, praying, you know, um, keeping the devotionals going, spending time with my kids, making sure that I'm scheduling those things. Again, it's not perfect, but we're trying. Well, you're doing you're doing the best that you can right. in trying to keep everything. But I really like the way that you talk that you talk about scheduling yourself in mm -hmm. because that's one of the things that Coach Colleen talks about mm -hmm. a lot is where are you on your own schedule? Absolutely, because you gotta you've got to be. Um, secure in yourself too. So mm -hmm. I really like, I really, really like that. Absolutely. How does the whole pandemic or how has the whole pandemic and the job that you do with mm -hmm. working with hundreds of children every day and mm -hmm. families every day, how has that changed? And you know, it over is, this time. It is completely different. I started um, this job as a principal during the pandemic. And so a lot of the principals... I remember, that, congratulations, yeah. here it is. Yeah, it was like, here you go, you know, run this school, and by the way, do it during a pandemic, you know. Um, it was hard, and it still is hard work. You know, being in education is hard, period, mm -hmm. let alone doing it during a pandemic. And so it was hard because you're A, trying to lead a school, but then also I have my own family at home who's also trying to do school and work during a mm -hmm. pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and so balancing was so important during that time and also realizing my staff was also trying to do the same thing. I had families, you know, my students were trying to do the same thing. Some had right. parents who were still working. So, you know, we're trying to tell them, okay, set an alarm so you know to get up so you can be on for school tomorrow. Um, but we also talked about how amazing it was to be in the homes of these students for a year. So I almost feel like that made us closer knit together because, you know, we I've were... I've heard it you know, like we were, we were actually in their homes, you yes. know, for that amount of time through Zoom, you know, so some of them were showing us around their, you know, house or apartment mm -hmm. and um, what their bedroom looked like. So it was neat. You know, I think they felt like we were a part of their home. And being as connected as you could be. Mm -hmm. If you got to do something over during a pandemic, what would it be? Oh, gosh, that's hard. Um... I would hope we never have to go through this again. Yes, yes. that's number one. Number five one on the list. Yeah, number one. Never have to go through this again. If we had to do this again, I think we learned a lot about time. Um, learning that we can't really duplicate what we do for kids face to face over a computer. Um, right. I know for myself, if I'm trying to read a long email, I want to print it off. Or it's too much mm -hmm. time in front of a computer. We start to get tired, or you know, we need a break. So scheduling would definitely look a little different for us. I think if we had to do this again. Mm -hmm. um, doing some more events where we could involve families. I know it was hard because we really couldn't be face to face a whole lot, but mm -hmm. some more even drive through things. We did some stuff in front of the school. We had them picking up um, items, doing a lot more just to involve our families in. One of the events we did a holiday kind of culture where families could send in a video of um, some of the things that they do as families in the culture during the holidays. So we had one oh, family. Fun. It was really neat. Um, they did almost like a cooking show so they videotaped themselves making their Christmas cookies. One family did a video of them singing carols, you know, in their in their living room. And we got to share it with our whole, you know, school during our live morning meetings every day. So it was really neat. Oh, that sounds, I would have loved to have been a part of that. Yeah. And that brings all of that diversity in because everybody's doing things, but not necessarily the same thing. Absolutely. 
you have two philosophies that you live by. Mm -hmm. Every child deserves a champion. Mm -hmm. Why? So Rita Pearson, who that quote comes from, she has done absolutely one of my favorite TED Talks, and I show it up probably a million times every year. I know my staff have seen it a million times. But we talk a lot about we are sometimes for some students, their stability, what they see every day. Right. Um, we're that person who is there for them that's giving them a structure, a routine. And so every child needs that person who is going to stand up for them, that person who's going to root for them. Um, we talk about how education is not just, you know, I'm here from this time to this time and I leave. It's a lifelong, you know, experience. You know, I'm still seeing students who I had back when I worked at Mill Creek, back mm -hmm. when I worked in Shelbyville, mm -hmm. who are getting married, going to college, That's getting scholarship. Yeah. It makes me feel real old, but I'm, <laughs> we'll forget about that. They're getting older. Um, but knowing that they have somebody that is championing for them, you know, they've got somebody in their corner, no matter what's going on, someone that they can talk to, someone they know is rooting for them. And then that someone also has to um, come with no significant learning, comes mm -hmm. without a significant relationship. Absolutely. And that quote is actually on the front door of my office. And um, Rita Pearson talks about that as well in her TED Talk, the quote from James Comer, that, you know, students don't learn from people they don't like. Not saying you need to be their friend, but you have to have a relationship, relationship. with them. You, they have to know that you respect them, they'll respect you, and that you have their best interest at heart. And so just like a mom, I may say some things that you may not like, but you know it's coming from a place of love because we have that relationship together. That's mm -hmm. right. Ebony, I'm so glad to celebrate you, but before we go, for any young girls or young women who might be looking up to you and saying, gosh, I wish I could be where she is, what kind of advice would you give them? Stay true to yourself. Stay true to who you are, your values, uh, what you believe in, because your core will take you any place you can imagine. Um, you know, my brother always talks about the sky is not the limit, it's just the view. And so staying to your core will take you Imagine, unimaginable places. Wow. Yes. Thank you so, so glad much. to celebrate yes. you. <laughs> you guys continue to join us as we celebrate other women just like Ebony Hutchinson who are doing amazing things in the community. We'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.